Okay, so because I now have water cooling on my Raspberry Pi 5, I figured I better do some stronger overclocking just to see what it's capable of. I've regularly run at 3 gigahertz on this particular Pi 5 and it's been very stable. I'm currently running at 3.1. I tried it last night for quite a bit and uh, it seemed to be running well. So it's been on for about 20 minutes this morning. I've been running Sysbench to uh, just sort of test it and max the cores out. So if I run that again just to show you uh, that it's 3.1 gigahertz, currently at 28 degrees. The maximum it's been is 32 degrees. And I left it playing a YouTube video for quite some time last night and it didn't crash. Um, but I don't know if it's gaining in performance uh, and I'm gonna test that by rendering a video because in the past I've certainly seen, especially with the Pi Zero 2W, where it reports a higher clock speed but doesn't actually improve performance. So let's grab a video file from my NAS drive. And it's this one, which is some uh, GoPro footage that I've got at 1080, which I always use for a demo. Yeah, that's the one. So let's copy that uh, and I'll put it in the video folder. And uh, I think I've got handbrake on here. No, I haven't. Okay, let's install that. It's always really nice to install with the Discover Store because it finds it all for you, gives you reviews and all sorts of things. This is my build of KDE Plasma if you're interested. It is available for download and it's based on Raspberry Pi OS, so it gets all the updates. Okay, so that's finished. So let's launch that and let's open source and let's do uh, 4K for a change. So 4K HEVC. And let's see how long that takes. You can see some of the cores going maxed out. Now it's worth mentioning at this point, obviously overclock at your own risk, especially at these much higher speeds that I'm gonna be showing in the video. Okay, so that's all finished, so I can check on the edit how long that took. Uh, now what I need to do is check if it makes a difference to go over three gigahertz. So I've been reading a few things on the forums and, and everything I can find in videos and some people have been saying that you can't go over three gigahertz. So let's see if it made a difference. Uh, so what I need to do now is call up the terminal and go into config.txt and let's just change this to three gigahertz. This is how I've been using it. And I haven't been using over voltage underscore delta, so I'm gonna hash that out. Control X, yes, and enter. And then let's reboot. So let's hit start. So I finished that test and that ended at five minutes and 20. And uh, if we go back to the previous one, it was five minutes 30 at 3.1 gigahertz. And I did this test multiple times. So uh, if we go through here, uh, I had all sorts of results, all around about the sort of 520 mark. Uh, and I tried various different clock speeds. And as you can see, loads and loads of tests. And I had absolutely zero crashes. Uh, everything was very stable and everything worked really well. But as you can see from the results, nothing really happened. Uh, so the best result I've got is at the top. I've done it the best time at the top and the worst time at the bottom. And you can see 3.4 gigahertz uh, took 520.46 with an over voltage of eight, force turbo was on, and the GPU was set to 1100. That's the first time I enabled the GPU but I don't really think it made a difference because if you look at the next test, which was almost exactly the same time, instead of over voltage, which was eight, I used delta voltage of 100,000 and uh, force turbo was off with stock GPU speeds and it was pretty much exactly the same time. 3300 was pretty much the same at those settings. Uh, three gigahertz is a weird one in the middle of this mix. Uh, so literally I've just told it the clock speed three gigahertz nothing else, uh, so stock GPU, force turbo is off, no over voltage, uh, which is how I've been overclocking the Pi 5 uh, quite a lot, just at three gigahertz with those settings. And that was nearly as fast as the 3.4 gigahertz. So for this handbrake test, as you can see, uh, it, it really hasn't concluded anything. So I'm gonna move over to Geekbench and see if that makes a difference. Okay, so if I quickly run NeoFetch, just to show that it's running at 2.4 gigahertz, and if I show you the config is basically, uh, everything is hashed out, so it's nothing's enabled. And let's open the terminal again and run Geekbench 6. 
and come back when that's all done. Okay, so let's have a look at these results. So 767 single core and 1536 multi-core. And if we scroll down, you can see 2.4 gigahertz. So let's change these settings. And all I'm gonna do is change the clock frequency. So I'm going from 2.4 up to three gigahertz. Control X and yes to save that and reboot. So we can see we're on three gigahertz. Let's run Geekbench six again. Okay, so I thought it was taking a while. It's actually crashed. So I'm gonna restart it and I'm gonna apply some over voltage. Okay, so that's all finished and that worked fine with that over voltage. So let's open this in the browser. And we got a significant change. We went from 767 up to 888, uh, going from 2.4 gigahertz to three gigahertz. And multi-core score went from 1536 up to 1637. So the real test now is, is this gonna improve if I go up to 3.4 gigahertz? So let's go into config and just change to 3.4 here. And here we're gonna change it to 100,000. So let's do control X and save that and then reboot. So 3.4 is showing and let's run Geekbench again. Okay, let's see if we can improve on the three gigahertz score. Again, let's open that in the browser. Okay, well there is some improvement. We've got uh, 888 on three gigahertz goes to 898. So not a lot better, but better. And the multi-core performance goes from 1637 up to 1641. So let's see if the GPU can improve that. So GPU frequency 1100. And let's save that. And reboot. And run that test again. So it has, so it has crashed. Uh, it's come up with a segmentation fault. So I'm going to lower the clock speed but keep the GPU. Uh, so let's go to 3.2 and see what we get on that. Control X and yes, and then reboot. Okay, so this last one seems to have worked. Uh, so 3.150 over voltage of eight. And I've turned on force turbo equals one. I know that in some of the posts on the forums, they seem to be using force turbo equals one when they're overclocking the GPU. And it did seem to work for me. So let's have a look and see how we go on. So let's open that up. So 898 and 1656. Well, it's the best multi-score I've had and the best single core score I've had. But it's just a shame that you have to have force turbo on because you don't want your uh, CPU working maximum all the time. So what I think I'm going to do is not bother with the GPU. So let's hash that out. And also not bother with force turbo and see how good a result I can get from 3150. So let's save that and reboot. Okay, so it has dipped a little bit without force turbo on, but it's still pretty respectable. Let's put all this in one table so I can compare it. And it does actually show as 3.2, even though it's 3.150. And I think NeoFetch will show the same. Yeah, shows as 3.2. So let's have a look at that table. So we definitely made a big improvement going from 2.4 up to 3 gigahertz. Uh, going from 7.67 up to 8.88 was really good. Uh, and also going from 1536 up to 1637, that was the biggest change, definitely, uh, without the GPU clocked. I then went up to 3400 and did get a little bit better results, but not enough for the 400 megahertz clock speed that we were going up. And then it started to fail. As soon as I introduced the GPU at uh, 1100, it started failing, and at 1000 it failed as well. But when I enabled force turbo equals one, then it did start to work. And that was the best score I got overall. But force turbo means that the CPU is maxed out all the time, which generally you don't need. Uh, so without that force turbo, the best scores I've got, 3150, single core 887, multi-core 1654, with an over voltage of eight. Really respectable scores. I think the maximum temperature I ever saw was about 33 degrees. So 
it's definitely not a fault of the cooler. Uh, the cooler is definitely doing its job. We're just hitting the maximum uh, for this particular pie. Now my original pie, which I was sent a couple of months early, doesn't overclock anywhere near as good as this. And they did say that from the Pi Foundation that they probably won't clock as well. Uh, but this is the first one that I bought and it does overclock very, very well. So I'd be interested to know what works for other people. Uh, obviously again, overclock at your own risk. I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.